Okay, so we're looking at section 1-4 using the definitions of the trig functions. So the reciprocal identities, we've already talked about them. We've been dealing with them. From your reference sheet, we know that sine is equal to y, oh, not over x over r, sorry. y over r, cosine is x over r, and tangent is y over x. And then we also know that the reciprocals, remember how they match up. Sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other, so this will be r over y. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, r over x and cotangent, reciprocal of tangent. We did mention briefly, though, that on a calculator, there are, these buttons aren't there, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. But you can find their values by doing what? If I wanted to find cosecant of, say, 30 degrees, what can I type in on the calculator to get that? even though there's no button. Do you remember? No. I want to do one divided by sine. So one over sine of theta is the same thing as cosecant. So same thing for secant. I can do one divided by cosine and cotangent one over tangent. So on a calculator, you might want to remember those. All right, so let's try A. It says find the tangent of theta if cotangent of theta is four. Well, if tangent and cotangent are reciprocals of each other and cotangent's four, that means tangent must be Just the reciprocal, not the opposite. Yeah, so the reciprocal of four would be one fourth. That's it. So tangent of theta must be one fourth. Can you zoom back in first? Sure. Yep. So if we look at B, find secant given that cosine of theta equals that. So secant and cosine. They're reciprocal functions, right? So all I need to do to get the secant is what with this? Flip it over. Lucky for us, that leaves it nice and easy because the radical's already on the denominator, but we still need to clean this up. So we're going to have uh, root 20 on the top, 2 on the bottom. That is not a simplified answer, though. Yeah, square root of 20 can be simplified, so that becomes negative 2 root 5 over 2, which can further be simplified to negative root 5. Do we agree? Yes. One thing on your quiz, a lot of you did not reduce, so you were losing like half a point here, half a point there, but that adds up. You always need to give your answers in fully simplified form. All right, now we're going to talk about the signs. We're going to try and squeeze in a little chart in here. Let's see if we can. So I want to do, um, let's say, theta in quadrant. We're going to have our four quadrants we're going to talk about. So let's see, one, two, three, and four. All right, I'm going to be looking at the signs of each of the six trig values depending on where my angle is, okay? So, let's start off with that. And then I just want the sine of all six, so. Sine of theta, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. <coughs> okay, we're going to make a little chart out of this.
I'm going to move over a little bit here. We have a set of axes. First, let's make sure that we're all um, correct in our quadrants, right? This is one. And where's the second quadrant? Left. Left. Down. Down is three. And there's the fourth. And you know the Roman numerals? <laughs> Okay, now, um, so we've been drawing our angles, and I don't know if you remember, uh, Rosie and I were just having a conversation yesterday about R. R is just the length of that terminal side, right, when you turn it into a triangle. And what's the sine of R? Is it positive or negative? It's always positive. Because R, remember, that's what we're talking about as a distance. You live five miles from the school. We never say you live negative five miles from the school. However, if I put a grid over Sturbridge, you may, and I made Tantasque with zero, zero, your uh, coordinate for your house could be negative five, six, right? If I had a coordinate plane over a map of Sturbridge, sure. But the distance that you live, no matter where you are, right? If Tantasque was here, it doesn't matter what quadrant your house is in. When I find the distance, wouldn't it always be a positive value? Are you with me? Even though the coordinates could be negative? You follow? Is everybody okay? Yeah? Yeah? You're okay. <laughs> What's the matter? What can I do to help? Oh, all right. Well, you let me know. You're so nice. I do what I can. All right. So, R is always going to be positive because it's just representing a distance. X and Y could be positive or negative depending on where you are on the coordinate plane. Okay? So, let's say we are in quadrant one. In quadrant one. What is true about all the x values? They're all positive. What is true about all the y values? They're also all positive, and r is always going to be positive. So um, who's positive in quadrant 1 as far as, so if I were to draw an angle, and I wanted its six trig functions. Aren't they all going to be positive? Because X, Y, and R are all positive. Right? You follow me? Mm -hmm. So in quadrant one, everybody is positive. So I just have positives for everybody in the first quadrant. Okay, now let's look at the second quadrant because things change now. So if I had an angle whose terminal side was in the second quadrant, what are the values of x in the second quadrant? They're all negative. What are the values of y in the second quadrant? They're positive, and r is always positive. Right? So remember, to find sine, cosine, tangent, you're just doing x, y, and r, depend, you know, whichever one you're doing, you're just dividing them by each other. So for example, where's my, uh, I need a laminated reference sheet. That's what I need. Where do we have a laminator in this school? Culinary has a laminator? I have to get down there. Oh, I don't even need it. I have it right above. <laughs> I have them right here. I don't know what I'm looking for. So let's see. 
If I were doing sine in quadrant two, sine, that's y over r. Y and r are both positive. So sine in my second quadrant will always be positive. Cosine is x divided by r. So that's going to be a negative number divided by a positive number. So cosine will always be negative. You're right. Tangent. Tangent is y divided by x. So that is a positive divided by a negative. So tangent will always be negative. And now, once I have the first three, the next three are just the reciprocals. So cotangent will be negative, secant will be negative, and cosecant will be positive. You with me? Do you want to try and do the third one by, on your own? Try it. See if you can figure out what's going to happen in the third quadrant. I'll help you get started. What are the x's in the third quadrant? No, I just drew it. X's are negative. What are y's in the third quadrant? Also negative. R's are positive. See if you can fill in the six, the signs of the six. Yep. Sure. When you're done, see if you got the same thing that I did. <coughs> did you? Yes. If you did not, do you see? Well, let's go through it. So sine, sine is y over r. Y is negative over positive. So negative over positive should be a negative. Cosine. Cosine is x over r. That's a negative over a positive. Still a negative. Tangent is y over x. Negative over a negative. That's a positive. And then once I have the first three, I have the next three because they're reciprocals. Okay. You want to try the fourth one? Go ahead. Well, let's talk together. The uh, x's in the fourth quadrant are... What are they? X's in the fourth quadrant are positive. Y's in the fourth quadrant are, someone said it, negative. And R's in the fourth quadrant are positive, because they're always positive. So using that, see if you can do the last line. When you're done, see if we match. Do you get what I got? So, real quick, sine is going to be y over r, so that's a negative over positive, negative. Cosine is x over r, 
positive over positive, positive. Tangent, y over x, negative over a positive. I end up with a negative. And then the reciprocals of the three. Gosh, Miss Sabia, this seems like an awful lot to remember. If only you had some cute little way for us to remember all this. <gasps> I do. I do. So let's just look at who's positive in what quadrant. In the first quadrant, who's positive? Everyone. Everyone. All of them, if you will. So all in the first quadrant. Who's positive in the second quadrant? Sine and cosecant, and they're reciprocals of each other, right? Right? So if I know that sine is positive, I automatically know that cosecant is positive. So I'm just going to stick with sine. Who's positive in the third quadrant? Tangent and cotangent, but again, they're paired together. So if I know tangent's positive, I automatically get cotangent. So we're just going to talk about tangent. And then lastly, in the fourth, it's just cosine. So it's much easier to just remember who's positive. And we have a cute little saying as you go through the quadrants. It's all, and then we just use the S, students, take calculus. I know it's not true, but it's an easy saying to remember. All, so everybody's positive in the first. Students for sine, take for tangent, calculus for cosine. So if you're just trying to find the sine, you can do it really, really quickly if you just remember that. So all students take calculus. Right, that's our little saying, but what it means is, this one's really all, sine, and then who's the reciprocal of sine? Cosecant, T for tangent, and who's the reciprocal of tangent? Cotangent, and then calculus is cosine, and the reciprocal is? Secant. So these are the ones that are positive in each one, and everybody else would obviously be negative. Cool. So if you look at C, it says determine the signs of the trig functions of an angle in standard position with a given measure. So if I need to find your six signs, Huh. Where does 54 degrees land? So, who's positive? Everyone. Everybody is positive. Well, that's, <laughs> that looks like a set of axes. They're all positive, yeah. 260. What quadrant would 260 land in? The third quadrant. So, who's positive in the third quadrant? Yeah, tangent and cotangent, it's reciprocal. So they're positive, everybody else is negative. All others negative. And how about negative 60, where does that land? What quadrant are you in for negative 60? Fourth quadrant. So who's positive there? Cosine. Cosine and secant. All others negative. Does that make sense? Yeah, we okay so far? Easy enough, just find the signs. All right, now in number two, this is kind of fun, or I'm sorry, D. Identify the quadrant or quadrants of an angle that satisfies the given condition. So in number one, I want to find a quadrant where tangent is positive and cosecant's negative. 
Well, I like to remember thinking about who's positive. What quadrants have a positive tangent? Someone said it. The third does, and there's one other. First, because first, first everybody's positive. So I'm already down to either the first or the third quadrant. So do one of those two have cosecant being negative? Third, it's gotta be the third, because remember, everybody's positive in the first. So this must be the third quadrant. Try the second one without me telling you what to do. Who's got an answer for the second one? Erica? First and second. Well, let's see. First, I want both of them to be positive, so I can definitely be in the first quadrant, right? And he says we can also be in the second quadrant. Do you agree? I do, because these are reciprocals of each other. So wherever sign's positive, so will cosecant can't be. So that also happens in the second quadrant. So I've got them both. Good. Is everybody okay so far? Yeah? I know it's some weird stuff, but. All right. The ranges of sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. We actually were just talking about this when we were discussing the project, believe it or not. Sine. Let's just focus on sine and cosine. Could I get any value out for sine in the whole wide world? Could sine of an angle be, I don't know, 19? No. no, because sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? <coughs> and what's the deal with the hypotenuse? Right. I can't have a sign that's greater than one because the hypotenuse is the biggest side. So as the two sides are getting closer and closer and closer to the same length, they'll get close to one, but since the opposite side can never equal the hypotenuse, I'm never gonna have a sign that's equal to one, well, unless I'm talking about a quadrantal angle. But I can't ever go bigger than one, right? So for sine, and then the same thing's happening with cosine. It's just that I'm dealing with adjacent hypotenuse. So for sine and cosine, um, well, actually, uh, can I go negative? Can I have negative sine and cosine? Yeah, look at your chart. Don't you have it in uh, quadrant three? You have negative sine and co cosine. In two, you have negative cosine. And in four, you have negative sine. So you can go negative, right? It just depends on where your quadrant is or where your what quadrant you're in. So I can be oops. Sine and cosine can only exist in that range. Oh, you know what? And let's put Let's actually do one for sine and cosine. So sine is y over r. So y over r has to give me a value between negative one and positive one. And then similarly for cosine, cosine is x over r. So when I do x over r, I have to get a value in between negative and positive one. <coughs> Does that make sense? Right? Because we're always talking about the hypotenuse has to be the longest side. I can approach it, but I can never quite get there. And then what was the deal with tangent? Was tangent restricted like sine and cosine were? No. no. Tangent can be whatever it wants to be. Because now I'm just comparing the opposite and the adjacent side. So for tangent, I'm going to do y divided by x. And that value could be whatever it wants to be. Cotangent is just a reciprocal. 
So I'm not restricted here. They can be anything I want. Um, yeah, so we'll just write because x can be greater than, less than, or equal to y, the ratios can have any value. Okay, you with me so far? Now let's talk secant and cosecant. So they are the reciprocals of sine and cosine. So what's gonna happen with them? So let's just talk about sine. Sine can be anything between negative one and positive one. So what would its reciprocal be? Give me a number between negative one and positive one, besides zero. Point two, okay? What's the reciprocal of point two? What's point two as a fraction? It's, yeah, it's five, is it? Hi! again? Two tenths, which is one fifth, right? Right? Everybody's with me? One fifth? Right? Okay, so I can have a sign that's one fifth, but the reciprocal of one fifth is five. But that's bigger than one. Correct. So um, cosecant then, the reciprocal of sine, cannot be between negative one and one. Let's pick another one. Give me another number between negative one. Let's go negative. Give me another number between negative one and positive one. That's not zero and pick a negative one. Negative point five? Okay. Negative point five. What's that as a fraction? Negative one half. What's the reciprocal? Two. Negative two. Oh, interesting. So basically what's happening, do you guys remember graphs of, um, Compound inequalities. Oh, well, here's negative one, here's positive one. I can have a sign that's anywhere in here. When I go to do the reciprocals, though, when you took one that was in here, so we had one, uh, what do we have? One fifth is in here. But when you take the reciprocal, it's out here, right? Five is over here. So I just have five. Well, this here represents sine. When I go to do its reciprocal, what it ends up being is everything the other way. So basically, I can have a, a cosecant that's less than negative one or greater than positive one. They're never gonna land in here because if I take the reciprocal, I land outside of that range. Does that kind of make sense? All right. So, let's write that in words here. So for secant, I can have something less than or equal to negative one, or sec, oh yeah, sorry. Secant can be less than or equal to negative one, or secant can be greater than or equal to positive one. And then because cosine works the same way, I'm sorry, that was the one for cosine. It doesn't matter, they work the same way. So cosecant, same thing. Put my thing in there. 
So when I go to take the reciprocals, um, I, I can't get anything in that range that I had in the beginning. It's got to be outside of it. So I'm going to be less than negative 1 or greater than positive 1. Everybody's all right so far? I'll take your silence as a yes. We're doing great. Okay, so if you look at the next little bit, you're just determining if these are possible or impossible values. So uh, for the first one, can I have a cotangent that's negative 0 0.99999? Well, let's look. Cotangent, if I look back here, it tells me cotangent can basically be whatever it wants. Yes. yes, that is possible. Tangent and cotangent, they really have free reign to be anything they want to be. Can I have a cosine of negative 1.7 in the second one here? Well, let's flip back. Let's see what ranges I can have for cosines. Okay, here's, this one was sine, this one's cosine. According to this, cosine, since it's x divided by r, I can, I have to be between negative one and positive one. So, can I have a cosine of negative 1.7? No, it is not in that range, it's impossible. Impossible. Right? <laughs> and your last one, cosecant of theta, could it be zero? You decide. Don't say, don't say it out loud, just decide for yourself. Can you have a cosecant that's equal to zero? Did you get an answer? What is it? You cannot. That is impossible. Cosecants need to be less than negative 1 or greater than positive 1. And 0 does not fall into that range. Okay? So, I actually think we'll take a little break.